Do you remember these two videos? No? Well, that's okay, because I also forgot about them until now. If you did watch the last two videos, then you would understand what I'm doing. I'm ranking every single Escape the Backrooms levels from worst to best. Now, this time, the rankings are going to be a little bit different, since some of the levels got major upgrades in this update, and I'll be combining them since they're technically the same level, according to the backroom lore. For example, level 37 will be ranked the same as level 37, the expanded version. Anyways, let's start off with the worst level, which is Pipe Dreams. Yes, Pipe Dreams is back at the top for being the worst level in the game, most dominated for being just a straight hallway. The level is still boring to play to this day, and there are no new changes to the level. Hopefully, that will change in the future, and maybe we'll get to do something interactive. Maybe it's turning valves. Number 25, that one long stair level that I'm not going to say the name of. To be honest, there isn't really anything you can do with this level to make it more enjoyable. It's literally just a climbing simulator and nothing else. Also, what am I else am I supposed to say about a staircase? It's just stairs. Number 24, the Neon Paradise. First off, this level looks very cool. But unfortunately, the potential of this level is such a letdown because all you do in this level is just punch a code for an elevator that you get from a ticket. If you look at some of the photos of the actual Neon Paradise, you would see that there are some Neon Pools, a Neon Hotel, and of course, the Arcade. Plus, the Neon Paradise in this game doesn't have that. The level environment looks awesome, the gameplay is just not much. Number 23, the Cave System. The games are still the same as they were during Update 3. It's a tense level with a ton of moths. I was gonna put in the script again, where are my spider enemies, but I don't think Fancy's gonna add them anyways, so I just gave up and threw it away, and enjoyed the level as it was now. But however, the third section of the level is still unfair since the RNG is telling the skin seer that it can just summon wherever it wants. Plus, it got buffed in the last update, so it's still really difficult to get past. Number 22, Motion. Motion, or as it's known to be called, level 94, is still a beautiful level with everyone copying each other's homework. I didn't check to see if the epic graphics worked on level 94 now, probably not, which is why it's still high up on the list. Ron McDonald's still the boss of 94, and the only boss fight in the game, which is cool I guess. But fix the optimization level 94, please! I have a fast running computer and I can only run this level at medium graphics. I would love to see the beautiful grass in the field. Number 21, Level the End. Level the End is home to the Scratcher, the entity who is blind but has very good ears. The Scratcher is a roaming AI, but in the worst way possible because it usually likes to camp in one area of the library and making collecting tapes much more annoying than usual. However, if you stay in this level too long, the lights will shut off and the experience becomes more tense, which is good for this backroom's experience, but not for the fact that if you die to the scratcher, you have to start the entire thing over. Number 20, the tutorial level. Yes, it's the first level of the game, which I would say it's a great first level of the game, but I feel like it isn't a good introduction. So the game has an actual ending now, but the video game never explains how you end up in the backrooms. It would be nice for the game to start in the actual MAG lab, or base, whatever it is, and build up to entering of the backrooms or the actual game itself. Though, Level Zero does have a good introduction puzzle and entity, which is the bacteria monster. Number 19, The School Halls. So, the lore behind this level is very interesting, since the uh, party poopers and party goers war happened in this level, but of course, the party goers won. Now, the goal in this level is to follow a party pooper to the exit, but it seems simple until you realize you have to copy its movements, and if you fail once, you have to start the entire level all over again. Number 18, Level Run For Your Life. Do you remember when Level Run For Your Life was on number 1 on the list? No? Good, because that's outdated. Level Run For Your Life is all the way up on 19th place because, well, there is a better version of the level, which I'll discuss later in this video. The sub-level version made the regular version of level run for your life not that intense anymore. It's now viewed as a straight hallway you run across, but however, you still get a bunch of entities chasing behind you and obstacles that mess you up, so it's not all too bad. Number 17, 
the Lassophobia. The entire level is a gigantic ocean, which sounds like a very interesting level until you realize the thing of level 7 isn't actually a threat. It's just part of a mid cutscene that takes you to the bottom of the ocean, where you swim and find the caves. Which is disappointing because I think the thing in level 7 should have been an actual threat instead of some cutscene character. However, the level does a good job and make it seem like there is going to be a threat. But wouldn't it be scarier if there was actually a threat falling behind you while you row your boat to the lighthouse? Number 16, level 55.1. The best part about this level is taking pictures of funny tall stick figure and the scary looking monster. The worst part is getting in the sand still. This level is a hit and miss. I love the idea of taking pictures and trolling your friends on this level, but in single player, it's quite frustrating since it's all on you and getting pictures is much more difficult because you have entities who won't behave in the photo and would rather kill you instead. Number 15, level five. The Tarot Hotel or level five is one of the most frustrating levels and it all goes to floor two the hotel you are able to cheat your way through it by punching one of these codes I have on the screen. It does switch every time you die. If you decide not to cheat your way through the level, then the entire task of it is by collecting these paper slots with letters on them and place them in these lockers. It can get very easy to get lost in the maze of the hotel. Plus, if you die, you need to go grab that same page again in the same exact room, which can be super annoying. It's even easier to get lost in the boy room since it's literally the same room in every direction. Oh, and the exit goes back to that straight hallway known as Pipe Dreams. Number 14, the Abandoned Office. The Abandoned Office used to be the number one place where you would restock on almond water and juice. But the snack rooms took that spot, and now it's just a safe place to run around, listen to that you are an idiot virus over and over again. You can even run around the cameras and be goofy. Still, it's an easier access to restock, since its door is in the hub. Number 13, The Darkened Suburbs. The 18th level of the game tasks you to install some viruses onto some computers located on the houses in the neighborhood. But however, I played the level a few times, and I noticed that there is one house that doesn't have a lock on the door, and a few which you can't kick the wretch out of their house. Which is really bad, since wretches are known to keep players away from their property. Not only that, but there's a hub door in one of the houses instead of some accessible place in the neighborhood. So if you want to go to the hub, you better not let a wretch catch you. <laughs> Number 12, The Habito Zone. The second level of the game is the first level that contains multiple gameplay, like collecting keys, and going through darkness, which is literally based on luck, as well as the introduction of the hub, which is a huge part of the skate to back rooms. You'll be entering there a lot. The gameplay is simple, and there's a good job of introducing canon entities of the back rooms. The only issue of it is that there's a key in the, one of the rooms, and sometimes the skin seer likes to camp that room. So you gotta figure out a way to get in that room without the entity seeing you. Number 11, Water Damage. Water Damage is literally a ruined version of level 0. It contains the same loud and entity. This level focuses on speed and timing, so if that isn't you, then you might have some trouble at this level. Nonetheless, this is a fun level and has a great atmosphere. Your friend the stick figure is there as well. He's friendly, I swear. There is a ton of liquid paint for you to consume, which I believe is this level way of saying it does not like you and wants you to leave. I do love the fact the game continues to give you liquid pain outside of level 5. This is a really funny joke, and I do believe there should be achievement for it. Number 10, Windows. So, level 188 is actually a level now, instead of some pointless level where you punch in a code. The level has an actual hotel layout and a spider character, just like every indie horror game ever. That's if you consider Skate the Back Rooms an indie horror game, that is. The goal of level 188 is to push some TVs to open a door to escape, but the issue with that is that it's hard to see where you're going because the television is right in front of you, and a giant enemy spider could be behind you at any moment, and you would have to grab the TV in the exact room again if you die. Though, I'm glad level 8 isn't playing the role of a cutscene anymore. Number 9, The Snack Rooms. This level is short and sweet. Now did level 4 but contain twice the amount of almond water and twice the amount of juice. There isn't much to say, so let's move on. Number 8, The Dark Pool Rooms. Also known as level 37.2. Wait. Wait a second. 
The dark forms is the level lower from the forms, which you must turn valves to fill up a tank. But don't let that watering clump find you rising the sea levels of the forums because it isn't a fan of it, and it does like to camp some areas, which makes completing the task longer than usual. Also, you have to do it three times. Number seven, the pool rooms. So let's forget the original pool rooms and let's focus on the expansion it got in the new update. It really feels like the pool rooms that we all imagine. Plus, I noticed that there were a couple references from Return to Render's silly backroom animations. It's a great level to row your boat and relax. Though the boat is a bit tough to row, and it can block the ladder, which can be a bit annoying. Plus, you have to enter level 37.2 three times, which explained why, well, it's a thing at least. Number 6, the Field of Wheat. Still one of the most unsettling levels of the game, I still don't find it one of the worst levels of the game like others do. It's scary getting chased in a field by some crazy dude without a face using a chainsaw. And I love the ambience of the level, giving out that empty feeling of being trapped in an infinite world that is just wheat. This probably don't have a fear of wheat, because I don't think you live through level 10. I, however, did find out that the windmills are a lie in this level, that you can just complete the level without touching a single windmill, which is a bit more challenging though. But you can do whatever you want. You can turn the windmills on, or just go for it blindly. Number 5, The Electrical Station. The Electrical Station is one of the best levels of Escape to Backrooms. It's even scary on VR because sometimes the hounds will get even closer if you don't hold your flashlight at a certain angle. However, <laughs> VR is broken though. The level has unique puzzles in rooms you can explore, including an electrical water trap. The Electrical Station is even the fourth level of the game, so I do hope this level makes you want to go forward throughout the game. Number 4, Lights Out. The Maze of Darkness is still one of the best visually made levels of the game. The lighter scanner gives out those beautifully made dots in the room where it denies flashlights. Plus the introduction of the wretches, well, kinda. The one you see in the introduction pretty much disappears, which I really don't think that's intentional. I do love the fact that you don't really see the wretch at this level. It makes it more mysterious and what it will look like later on in the game. Other than that, enjoy its ASMR breathing. Number 3, The Danger Zone in the Remodeled Mess. Yes, this level in the Skate the Backrooms is a combination of two levels, and the way they portray it is super cool. So what the mechanic is that you no clip for the floor and you can transfer from the level 0.2 to level 0.1 and the other way around, which is super cool level design. And the level makes you do this because you need to flip switches to close a gate containing a bone thief. Not sure we'll see it again, but it's very cool mechanic. Number two, the hotel chase. The level is called, well, that but it's easier to call it the Hotel Chase. This is the better version of level Run For Your Life. There are so many turns and obstacles that can screw you up. The level also comes with a banger track, and this is what it sounds like. The level has tricks that can cause you to get caught up with a smiler, and it will make you start the maze all over again. This is also the level where it introduces the most terrifying entities, the Clumps. Number 1, Level Fun Plus. Level Fun Plus is literally just better level fun, which is why I refuse to put Level Fun on the list. I like to think of Level Fun Plus as the actual version of Level Fun, but you guys will probably be mad at me for calling Level Fun Plus the original Level Fun. There are so many variants that make the level more alive than the original Level Fun, as well as some activities like balloon popping, red light green light, but with cables, Simon says, and civil searching with glow sticks. The party girls can be a bit goofy, but I prefer the laughs in this level since it lives up to the name fun. That's all the levels for now, until the next batch comes out. See ya.